Georgia, and I told her that this weekend, is just like she is such a leader uh-huh. and she is such this force. Mm-hmm. And just where Isla has come in the last like year, however long it's been, two years since I've known her, is so incredible. And she's so cool. Yeah. Like we were saying that the other day when she got her hair cut, like she is just the coolest. And they're so uniquely individual. Mm-hmm. And Isla's just coming into that, whatever it is that she is. I think she's really coming back to herself. I think the mm-hmm. pandemic did a really bad number on her. Yeah. I think the pandemic and she has always marched to the beat of her own drum. Yeah. And ha- was never aware of that until middle school. Mm-hmm. And the people that were marching with her made big changes right. and then thought her drum was lame. Right. And it, it was very. Um, it's a rough time. Yeah. It was. It really hurt her. Yeah. Because. Um, the person that was most important to her was one that were like, this is lame. Right. And so she she really just didn't know where to go. Right. And it took her till recently to figure out. Oh, well, I don't really care. Yeah, I'm cool. Yeah, I don't really I care. This is okay, yeah. Yeah. you know? And um, especially to see that person thrive. Right. So they must be right. Right. Because they're thriving. But the, you you don't know that one has nothing to do with the other. Right. They really are not related. Yeah. But you don't know that. Everyone can thrive. It's not Everybody one can thrive. Right. And, and just because you don't jam to the same music they jam to doesn't make your music bad. Right makes your music yours. Right. And so I think she's finally figuring that out. I've been dying. I was saying this to my dad. I was like, I wish I could just give my kids just this little wisdom. I don't need them to have my experiences. Just a little bit of my wisdom to know that who you are is absolutely perfect. Right. You don't have to change for anybody except yourself. Right. If you want to change for yourself. Right. You are a perfect example of that to them. Because you. you just are authentically who you are. Thank very you. comfortable in your skin. Very successful at what you do. Um, take no prisoners with friendships, with jobs, with you're just in it. Yeah. All the way. Thank you. And uh, thank you very much. For- well, I'm super grateful. And I've said this to you guys too, just for the amount of like emoting that you guys do in the love that you <laughs> show. We? I'm like, I can't even take it. Um, We're I'm not, over emoters. <laughs> I'm not good at taking compliments. So it's like really uncomfortable for me. But you guys have just been such an amazing family of just everybody is and group of friends and and all of it. I mean, I don't think I think I felt really lost. You know, I mean, I think a lot of us did during the pandemic. Like now what? Mm-hmm. We were like losing everything. Our businesses are uh, at risk, like our relationships are at risk, our community that we had, we actually can't have right now. So it was Mm -hmm. so challenging. And I was so, I actually isolated myself and I had isolated myself before the pandemic because I was just like work, 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 work. And, Mm. um, I had chosen to do these two, God, I can't like stop. Sorry. sorry. Um, (laughs) you have a premiere, you have a premiere. Uh, I have to go to the premiere. I can't (laughs) get, what do they say on Downton? (laughs) I have a bit watery. Um, so, (laughs) uh, you know, I think that the timing of when we all came together was just so special for me because then all of a sudden it was like, boom, community. And you guys just do that. Here are so 16 well. people. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> and we like, I mean, it, yeah, it's here's 16 people that have spent, I don't know how many years together, but are just the best of friends and appreciate each other for their flaws and like their amazing parts and everything and warts and all. Yeah. As they say. So amazing. And, you know, working with the girls gave me this purpose of like, okay, how do I figure out how to get them out of their shells that Mm -hmm. I see them in? Mm -hmm. How do they work together and those things? And we saw it, you know, day one, I mean, fitness just kind of does that, Mm -hmm. but it was just like giggling and fun. And I had worked with youth before and that's probably the most rewarding world you can be in but also I had mentors like that this uh girl Christy Hartley who was a basketball player that I looked up to and just idolized her and um her team won the the division one I mean they were like a small school in New Mexico where my family is from but the whole team showed up for me I was a like super young I think I was in sixth grade and they invited me to come to their basketball camp with them. And they invited me to like come like watch them play. And they gave me this poem, which I'm actually going to give to George. I just didn't get it printed in time that 
uh, was just about like uh, young people are always watching you mm-hmm. and what you do and what your, your choices are are seen by other people that are looking at you for guidance. So mm-hmm. think about that when you're making decisions. Right, right. And so that just came full circle for me when they stepped into that gym and started doing stuff. Right. Right. 